Hey guys, welcome to another episode in the deep playthrough of AC Unity. Still in the epilogue section, I already 100%ed the game, but and also platinumed it, so it's fully done. But I'm also reading up on the lore now and all the database entries because I think that's an integral part of the of the playthrough. Let's continue. Still quite some reading to do. Phoenix Project Reports. Note, Melanie, this is one of the documents I mentioned. N now that your security clearance has been raised, I think it's time you understood the full picture. AG. What the hell is AG? AR is the CEO. AG, that is A Grammatica. Alvaro Grammatica. Alright. Level 8 security clearance only. It is a federal and international crime to read or process these documents without proper authorization. UN Charter, Special Appendix C, NGO and Corporate Benef Benevolence Waivers. Violators will be punished to the full extent of the law. The Phoenix Project Special Report, 15 September, September 15, 2014, covered in this brief successes, challenges, next steps. Part 1 Successes While the general public remains content to generate amusing tornadoes of sound and fury over the basic facts of evolution, we have made such incredible progress in our study of the precursor hominid species that it renders these minor squabbles utterly irrelevant. Our advances achieved through decades of diligent research and ingenious experimentation by Obsterga's best and brightest have finally led us to a full understanding of the teleological origin of our species. species. We are now prepared to embark on our third major phase of research into our progenitor creators, Homo sapien divinius, HSD hereafter. Alright, one second. I just want to make sure. Teleological. It's the same as I think it means, like religious based. Relating to or involving the explanation of phenomena in terms of the purpose they serve, rather than of the cause by which they arise. All right, no, that's something. new to me, one second, teleological, all right, uh, one moment, almost done, Sorry, I'm just looking it up in my mother tongue. Um, is a reason or explanation for something as a function of its end, purpose or goal, as opposed to a function of its cause? One moment. So function is more important than cause. Teleos is last and logos is word. So it's last word in, from Greek. Yeah, or telos is also a goal, purpose. Logos is reasoning. 
So it's the reasoning of um, yeah of, of purpose of goals. Almost there. Sorry, guys. This is uh, a little bit of a side jump. All right. So it's the the, the most uh, important thing is it is. Um, to purpose um, sorry that was a really long sidetrack uh, apologies for that uh, where were we the first stages of Abstergo's study of HSD Homo sapiens divinius began with nominal efficiency in the 1950s following Rosalind Franklin's pioneering but censored discovery of triple helix DNA I think that's a real life woman who did a lot indeed for DNA. One second. Rosa Lintz. She discovered the key properties of DNA. Whoa, amazing. All right, our scientists achieved further success in the late 60s with the discovery of the fossilized remains of four HSD specimens near the base of Mount Kilimanjaro. Evidence of this precursor race had already been the subject of speculation and rumor for many centuries before, but with modern scientific techniques we were able to confirm their existence beyond any doubts. Phase 2 began in 1971 with the creation and funding, so this is all phase 1. So what was phase one? All right, not much, just like preparatory study. Then confirm the existence of uh, HSDs. Phase two began in 71 with the creation and funding of Abstergo's first official precursor habitation expedition. By the end of that decade, seven large scale Denisovan sites Denisovan sites located in Europe, Africa, North America, and Asia had been discovered. What is Denisovan? Alright, whatever. Had been uh, located in Asia, uh, Europe, Africa, North America, and Asia had been discovered and partially excavated. These discoveries were not made without setbacks, however, and the quality of the data was often questionable. But we entered the 1980s with no doubts as to their importance. It was at this time too that a concerted effort was made to recover as many tools, artifacts and curios as possible from these and other sites. Alright, one second, sorry. I always forget it. I think I searched it earlier or looked it up. But curio, a rare, unusual or intriguing Object. Oh man, it's so annoying. Androids. And um, I forgot what the name of my browser is. One sec. Yeah, Opera. Android and Opera Mini, they really uh, can be quite annoyingly inconsistent. Anyways, um, as regards to reliability in, in operation. Um, phase 3 has now been in full operation since 2004, guided by the explicit mandate to sequence an entire precursor genome by the year 2018. 
So far we feel we are in good position to meet that goal. In parallel with this project, an adjunct team has been tasked with the job of acquiring as many distinct samples as possible and extracting whatever useful genetic memories we can obtain. Their work tangentially related to the sequencing project will be invaluable in the long term as a source of advanced scientific and historical knowledge. Right. Um, one moment. And again. Feel. All right. I would say tangential is like sideways or superficial or something. Tendential related, sideways, superficially related, I think. Relating to or along a tangent, diverging from a previous course or line, erratic. Touching lightly, incidental, peripheral, tendential. Involvement also of little relevance. Arguments tendential to the main point. Divergent, aggressive. Yes, that's also what I was thinking. So the first translation, I'm not sure whether that is as accurate in Google. Diverging from a previous course or line, that's not necessarily the same as being um, incidental, peripheral, or uh, yeah, okay, divergent, digressive. Um, one moment. Right. Uh, it is, by the way, a pretty, very cool, I must say, premise of this whole series with that precursor DNA and those memories that you can access. Um, of course, it goes, um, in my view, maybe a little bit too much into the whole sci-fi realm with the sages and stuff. But in essence, it's pretty cool. And also, Abstergo, it's like almost like a metaphor of Ubisoft itself, because th that's really like that fourth wall. Like, you start this game also as going into the um, Helix uh, and playing that memory of Jacques de Molay. So as a player in the game world, as a person in the game world, you are actually entering a software program to uh, go back in time. And that is of course exactly the same as Ubisoft provides their um, player base uh, with the AC series. So it's pretty uh, almost like a meta story, I would say. I'm not saying that Ubisoft is doing precursor DNA research and stuff, but this, the, I really find it a very interesting um, a premise for a storyline. Uh, one moment, I'm making one last learning moment, or not the last probably. Alright, um, in conjunction with the HSD Genome Project, additional teams have been tasked with sequencing the genomes of related species in the Homo genus. To date, these teams have made the following progress Homo sapiens divinius, 4%, Homo sapiens sapiens complete, Homo neanderthalensis. Neanderthalensis completes Homo erectus 17, Homo antecessor 4, Homo ergaster 13, Denisova. Ah, that is what they meant with 
Danny Sofa over here. Wait. Was somewhere here. Here, by the end of the decade, seven large scale Denisovan sites. So that's also um, a human type. Denisova homininens, 2%. Homo habilis, 16%. Homo sapiens idaltu, 27%. Wonder whether these actually all exist. I guess so. Uh, one moment. Yes, scientific name, Homo sapiens idaltu, that is the um, Herto man. That's uh, 160,000 years ago, person from Ethiopia. It's likely the immediate ancestor of the modern human. All right. Um, initial reports indicate that at least some of these hominids, like us, owe their existence to the precursor HSD species. The genome of Homo neanderthalensis, Neanderthals, for example, bears unmistakable signs of deliberate craftsmanship. Further archaeological evidence indicates that Neanderthals may have been explicitly designed and built as a military or expeditionary force. Research into this field of study is in its infancy but is ongoing. Part 2. Challenges. God damn it, these are long. Progress with the HSD genome has been slow since our project began in 2006. In collaboration with researchers at Rosalind Franklin University, as the functional half-life of DNA is approximately 500 years, we are resigned to the fact that most remains of HSD organisms will contain at best 0.625% of their original information. Secondly, acquisition of actionable remains has proven difficult. We suspect one reason may be that the HSD species at the height of its cultural development in 80,000 BCE. What is BCE again? That's some kind of a non-politically correct way to say BC, I guess, without involving religion. It's all so tiresome, all those conventions and modern day stuff common era before the common era oh my god it's so tiresome anyways um had an almost universal preference for cremation over the elaborate bur burial rituals preferred by lesser hominids, ourselves included. We also know that following the large scale Toba extinction event, the HSD species died off very rapidly as members of the Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis advanced at a startling rate. Further evidence indicates that these latter species dismantled and salvaged almost all precursor sites as a means of survival. However, in recent months we have discovered the existence of two potentially fruitful sources of intact HSD DNA. One source has been confirmed recently, a recur recurring though extremely rare breed of human male archetype Born with enough triple helix DNA to account for five to six percent of his total genome. Colloquially called sages, ah, that are the sages. By previous generations, these specimens, if captured alive or with enough genetic material intact, would enrich our search for precursor DNA samples immeasurably. Immeasurably. 
The second source is classified pending confirmation. Pending confirmation, but early results are promising. Part three, next steps, the tactics and strategies committee advises the following courses of actions in the near future. Utilize animist technology to locate humans with trace amounts of embedded triple helix DNA. As has been demonstrated by the findings of the late Dr. Fiditz, crossbreeding between HSD and HSS did occur on more than one occasion. Average ranges in normal humans typically run from 0.0002% to 0.0005% of the total genome, while the DNA, DNA acquired from subject 17 was an extraordinary 0.952%. As mentioned in uh, one moment. As mentioned in part two, make all efforts to locate more sages. Living samples are preferred, but any remains younger than three or four millennia would give us a significant advantage. Three, locating so-called blood files, purported to contain the preserved blood of precursor luminaries, would also prove invaluable. It's not known how effectively the vials have preserved these samples, but they are nevertheless a promising source of additional information, especially if required in bulk. All right, pretty cool. Uh, it, it's actually quite interesting lore. It's almost like reading a book. Uh, and also it is related to the game itself because yeah, we did encounter a sage in this game at the end. Germain was a sage, I understood, although his body was never recovered. But um, yeah, interesting. Um, all right, let's see how long do we still have. A bit, 15 minutes or so. Um, here we go. Archive conversation, sep uh, Feb 27, 2014. It's a transcribed, tele transcribed telephone conversation between LeMay and Grammatica. Hello, Melanie Alvara. You must be on your way here. I'm in Toronto on layover. Should be in Montreal around 9 tonight. Ring me if you need something, a taxi or a restaurant recommendation. I will. Did you have a look at the documents I sent you? By the way, earlier I said that in this conversation, I think, or maybe the previous, uh, in this episode, or maybe the previous episode, I think I said that Obstergo or Helix were like Templar institutions, but I'm actually not sure about it because the Animus and stuff, yeah, it are also assassins going in there. So, uh, one moment, let's make that a small learning moment before I get totally confused. Um, Obstergo, Templar or Assassin. As the greatest industrial force the Templars owned, Abstergo shared the same beliefs as the Templars. Order and discipline through power and control. Yes. So, that is. Uh, That is the uh, answer, so it's Templar related. Some Abstergo employees did not recognize the Templar order, neither did they hear about it, but certain high-ranking members of Abstergo knew the Templar cause. All right. Um, yeah, and then maybe the assassins just hacked their way into uh, into the animus and the helix and stuff. Um, anyways, uh, 
ring me if you need something, a taxi or a restaurant recommendation. I will. Did you have a look at the documents I sent you? I did and I'm, I'm stunned. We all are. It's incredible, isn't it? And you're sure about the dates? As near as we can be. We're confident those dates were taken a century or two after the Toba catastrophe. I've never seen such strange architecture. Few people have. Do you have any footage of this? Why just still images? A sage should have more genetic memories than that. They do, but the earliest memories are always the hardest to disentangle. They're difficult to parse, but we're getting there. I imagine you want to find more sages then. That's the plan. We're always on the lookout for old DNA. The sages should be our so best source. And blood files, I'd imagine, like Edward Kenway found. Yeah, goddammit, these are games I still have to play. And Edward Kenway, I think, is from Black Flag, which is a game that's... Ah, that came before this one, indeed. Goddammit. Really a lot of... Um, things being spoiled here i guess blood files too and relics all very valuable and if we're lucky enough to find another piece of eden that might help well i'll put one of my researchers on this and any references to sages or blood files i'll put them up i'll pull them up that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Thanks, Mel. You holding up? I am. Thanks. Just prepping early for VEX this year. We've got some great things lined up. I've heard. I look forward to it. A transcribed uh, Argat conversation, May 13th, 2014. A transcribed telephone conversation between Le Main and Grammatica. Avaro, it's Melanie. Of course. Hello. I'm glad you called me. I was about to head into an experiment. Well, I just wanted to give you an update. The list of sage references I gave you last week. We found a few more leads I want to investigate. And I wanted your opinion. Great, shoot. Okay, as we check the sample 17 lineage like you asked, but... Okay, ah, we checked the sample 17 lineage like you asked, but didn't find anything promising until we went back to Europe in the 5th century uh, common era after Christ. Faint echoes of a bloodline sage sometime around the height of the Han Empire. Hmm, it would be difficult to find an intact sample that far back. Yeah, I felt the same. Let's see, another sample we checked came from a local Montrealer. That sample revealed an ancestor named Arno Dorian from Revolutionary France. Arno wasn't a sage himself, but initial reports suggest he may have come into contact with one. Hmm, that's promising, but not ideal. I'd rather find a bloodline sage, not someone who met one. What else? Ah, one more. A singer named David Jones from England, mid-20th century. No further details on this one, though. Uh, better, but the name... David Jones, that could be any one of a thousand people. That was my worry, too. Let's look into the Frenchman. It's possible we could find something. Good, I'll put him on the back burner though. We have other leads I'd like to follow first. Whatever you think is best. Thanks, Alvaro, I'll keep you posted. Pretty cool, this is like... Um, them, uh, yeah, preparing for the whole Arno story. But what I don't understand is... <laughs> I didn't see any we were killing Templars in the game but that were like contemporary French Revolution Templars I didn't see anybody from the current day from Abstergo or someone also in that game world trying to hunt uh, down Germain uh, for his uh, sage blood and DNA so Yeah, I don't really understand that. They are now talking about it over here in their discussions. 
by the way they look like pretty reasonable people i do like it it's pretty gray it's it's not very black and white who is the good and the bad guy because i i'm also looking forward to playing ac rogue to play as an uh, as a templar because how i see it and also what i read in real life about the templars they for sure were not all bad guys i would say maybe even the assassins you could easily construct as bad guys next having everybody of course i'm playing as a non-lethal assassin only focusing on the targets but nevertheless they are um, easy killers all right um public relations primer evolution by natural misdirection public impression management primer by Dr. Alvaro Gramatica in a lecture delivered last autumn at the Cons Council's annual strategies and tactics meeting. I opened with a simple question. How much should the public know about the truth of human origins? The discussion that followed led by myself and, and Mr. Rickin was lively and covered a broad field of topics. In general, a consensus was reached on the following point, it is not in the public's best interest to have any confirmation whatsoever of the hyper hominid species HSD. No, it was called differently, right? One second. God damn it, where was it? Here, Homo sapiens divinius. Ah, okay, that is also the abbreviation, Homo sapiens divinius. But here they, for whatever reason, they just call it hyper hominid species. That predates our own. To positively confirm that our own species was quite literally born in an ancient laboratory operated by a race of intellectually superior hominids would have a corrosive effect on society as a whole. The damage it could do to basic social cohesion would be catastrophic in many parts of the world and it would be jeopardize the success of many of our ongoing information campaigns. If enough proof of the precursor species were to rise above the level of conspiracy tinged theories, our preliminary studies indicate that non-religious and liberal citizens of faith would likely go to great lengths to discover more about this strange and startling fact, while those with fanatical devotions to various faiths would likely a violently oppose such basic truths with potentially destructive or dangerous consequences or b transfer the full bounty of their faith onto the precursors we have already seen this latter scenario play out through reports of a group calling itself the instruments of the first will a radical group of theofascists who preach among other ideas the natural inferiority of our species in the face of any superior species to with all right I'm not sure what that means uh, dedicated this information campaigns to foment encourage and sustain an array of conspiracy theories tangential to actual historical and scientific facts are a necessary component of keeping the existence of both the hsd fossil record and our genome sequencing project a secret. <coughs> <coughs> Alright, what the hell does wit mean? I know that width is like um, quick smarts, so to say, but two width. That is to say, namely, all right. 
so that is to say namely over there and there was another word tinged what the hell is conspiracy tinged emit a sharp clear ringing sound ting a slight staining or suffusing shade or color an effective or modifying property or influence touch a tinge of guilt tinge yeah okay so it's tinged it's conspiracy laced theory so to say i guess um Current ongoing disinformation campaign code names include hot or not, global warming and climate change. <laughs> Operation Cosmic Turtle, geocentrism, spare change, evolution by natural selection, GTUFO, extraterrestrial life, fool's gold standard, federal reserve system. We propose a system of coordination between some of these campaigns to ensure that all interest in precursor fossils and sites is misdirected down harmless, somewhat fantastical avenues. Further recent efforts have been made to paint our adversaries in a less than positive light in order to give their sporadic interactions with the first SIF a crazed cultish veneer. Last year, Abstergo Entertainment opted to pass over various assassin bio biographies as too controversial for the mass market. However, executives at Abstergo Industries countermanded these decisions, feeling that it was in our best interest to turn the public against the assassin cause, um, instead of pretending they do not exist. The truth will out as it always does. So it is critical that we are in control of the narrative when it does. The first handful of these So it is critical that we are in control of the narrative when it does. The first handful of these virtual experiences will debut soon. Keep in mind, the vast majority of conspiracy theories, while aggravating to our rational minds, are a critical part of our governing policy. There is a certain delicious irony in the fact that adherence to these various theories, men and women who believe themselves to be courageous archaeologists of hidden truths are in fact our first and best weapon against actual fact-finding and rational thinking. The noise they generate in pursuit of so-called simple truths, truths through grand unifying theories of everything is a necessary component in our bits to obscure the incredible complicated and interconnected net nature of actual history. Simplicity, therefore, is a necessary component of all this information. Swear by it. Therefore, A. Always encourage investigations of trivial but anomalous data points. B. Direct attention towards specific instances and away from general trends and patterns. C. Always insist that some simple truth is being obscured even when the reality of the situation is incredibly complex with many interdependent facts. Additional business, we settled on the name Phoenix Project as our codename for the HSD genome sequencing endeavor. In light of this, our disinformation campaign to obscure the true facts of this endeavor will be known as Phoenix Rising. The next council meeting has been pushed forward by six months to ensure progress on this most important endeavor. We will meeting in Brussels, we will be meeting in Brussels, Belgium on June 6, 2014 to coincide with that other event since most members of the council will already be present. Until then, contact Leticia if you have any questions. 
Alright, pretty interesting. Um, still quite a lot to read about. Uh, but yeah, let's do that in the next episode. Guys, hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you there. And for the meantime, do not forget, always do keep on gaming. See you later.